So, I am not a streamer, I don't have a Twitch account, I don't do live streams. So why did I buy an Elgato Stream Deck? I mean, it's in the name, right? Stream Deck? Well, while it's very useful to streamers since it ties in with OBS, Twitch and Twitter, in essence the Elgato Stream Deck is really just a glorified macro pad. But although you could kinda do most of the stuff this thing does with a normal keyboard plus some software, it is a rather nice piece of kit. And today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the Elgato Stream Deck from a non-streamer's perspective. Before we get into it though, a quick word from today's sponsor. If you want to protect your online privacy, check out Ivacy VPN. Ivacy have won awards for speed, have a zero locks policy, along with being one of the cheapest VPN providers around. The app is available on a wide selection of platforms, including Windows, iOS and Android, and features some very useful tools, including an internet kill switch for peace of mind in the event of a dropout, along with split tunneling, giving you the freedom to choose which traffic travels through the VPN, allowing for total control over your online activity. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Anyway, back to the video. Each key on the pad is basically a tiny OLED screen so it can display whatever you want, and since each button can dynamically change its look and function, it means you can have folders. So I can click this YouTube icon for example and a folder opens, and within that folder there's a bunch of buttons that do stuff like opening up my YouTube dashboard for example. So you're not really limited by only having 15 physical buttons on the pad. So if I don't use this for streaming, what do I use it for? Well for the most part I use it for the following three things. Launching programs as a macro pad to use within programs and as a shortcut to websites. Now while that might sound unnecessary, it's honestly crazy how much time this thing saves. My YouTube comments for example, I must pull up this page over 10 times a day when I'm at my computer before I'd have to navigate to YouTube, click on dashboard and click on comments. Now all I do is click one button and it's there, I don't even have to have Chrome open. So my top row of buttons is pretty much dedicated to website shortcuts and it saves a lot of time. I use the middle row mostly for launching programs, so when I click the Steam button, it opens a folder with a bunch of games in. Some of the game icons will immediately launch that game, while others like the Rocket League one actually opens up another folder, which has the Rocket League shortcut within it, but also has a button which turns my last goal into a video clip via GIF your game, or GIF your game if you like. Now yeah, I could just hit the shortcut on my keyboard, but then I have to remember which button it is. The Stream Deck is visual, so you don't have to remember any buttons or anything like that, and I think that's one of its biggest strengths. Now I even have a Smart Home folder on the Stream Deck. Yes, that's right, I can turn any of my smart bulbs on or off using the Stream Deck. How the heck is that even possible, I hear you ask? Well, it basically involves using if this then that to launch web shortcuts to a special link that's programmed to turn that specific bulb on or off. It sounds super complicated, but luckily my man Paul Hibbert made an easy to follow how to video on it. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to find out how to do that. But yeah, even being able to turn lights on and off is a time saver because I don't have to unlock my phone to open an app. Plus, all the buttons on this are all in one place. The Nano Leaf button is right next to my Philips U button. On a phone, I'd have to open up two separate apps. It's pretty cool. And the bottom row of buttons, I kind of use these for a few different things. The Premiere Pro button is basically a folder containing a bunch of hotkeys to use while video editing, and it saves a ton of time. I can instantly open the folder containing all of my footage, I can undo and redo without having to hold down several keys, I can ripple cut, zoom into the timeline, play and pause, which to be fair I could also do just by hitting the correct key on my keyboard. After all, that's really all the Stream Deck button is doing, it's pressing keys for me. But again, that would require me to memorise which key does what. With this, I've got a picture to tell me exactly what it does, it's so much more intuitive and therefore you get stuff done a lot quicker. Honestly guys, if you do any sort of video editing, this feature alone makes the Stream Deck totally worth it in my opinion. Also along the bottom, I've got a button to launch my audio editing software, along with a task manager button, so I don't have to hold Control alt delete to bring up task manager. It's pretty nifty. Now although there is a web page provided by Elgato where you can download or create your own icons for each button, there's not a huge selection and I honestly can't be bothered to make my own, so I got 90% of my icons by literally just going to Google, typing in smart home icon or whatever, downloaded the PNG and set it as the picture. To me that was the most simple way of doing things. Although to be fair, if you create a shortcut to launch a program, most of the time it'll pull the icon from the program automatically, so in that case you won't have to manually set an icon. However, for websites or macros, you'll have to sort one out yourself. 
Now for a few criticisms. The build quality is not really that great for the price of it is all plastic. The stand in particular feels very flimsy. Although it does have quite good grip, it doesn't slide around on the desk. I also would have liked a bit more flexibility in terms of angles. The stand only has four settings. You kind of have to be looking straight at the buttons as well, otherwise whatever icon they're displaying can look a bit distorted. I guess that's just the nature of having a display underneath a thick piece of plastic. A removable cable would have been nice as well, just in case it breaks. It's not braided or anything either. But honestly, I don't really have any other complaints. I think the software is great, it's easy to use and set up. It definitely takes a few good hours to get everything how you want it though, so make sure you set aside a good chunk of time for that. All in all, it's a very cool piece of kit, although if you're not a streamer, I wouldn't exactly call it essential. It definitely is more of a luxury kind of thing. If you're trying to decide between this and a new keyboard, for example, get a nice keyboard first. At the end of the day, you don't need a stream deck, it just makes a lot of things faster and easier. If you're one of those people who's always looking for ways to improve their setup and you've got the money to spare, I say go for it, you'll be very happy with it. I'll drop some Amazon links in the description if you want to check it out. If you've got any questions or you just want to say hi, drop me a comment below, I do reply to everyone. Thanks for watching today guys, I do hope you enjoyed. You can drop me a like rating to show your support, don't forget to subscribe as well if you want to see more. With that being said, hope you all have a good week, I'll catch you all in the next one.